Well hello and welcome back to Posh Cats Camping. We've spent the last two or three days preparing for our Euro Tour. It's uh, tomorrow that we set off, first thing tomorrow morning. I'm going to go for a haircut um, and then once I get home the last few things will be packed into the fridge and we'll be setting off on our journey to Folkestone. One or two things that uh, I'm doing around the van here today just giving it a good clean, um, sorted out the boot again, made sure that we got all the things that we needed. In my previous video we uh, showed how we organised the cupboards better and left some of the things at home. Well, there are one or two little odds and ends that we've added back in. Um, really just for, uh, because we were away for six weeks, we felt we needed um, a few extra things. There was extra medication and uh, all sorts of bits and pieces that we thought we might need. So they're in the, in the van or in the process of going back in the van. Um, nothing of weight. Um, all the heavy things that we don't need are back in the garage. And that's where they're staying for the duration. So we've uh, been over to Morrison's this afternoon and we've topped up with LPG. Um, I was about, I'd used about a third a quarter of it and um, fortunately it was only uh, £5.40 uh, I think it was 79 pence a litre at Morrison's today which is pretty good and then uh, filled up with diesel so we've got a full tank of diesel I've just put a little bit of um, water in there's probably about 20 litres of fresh water in the tank the grey tank has been drained and flushed through, so it's nice and fresh. And the toilet has been primed and is ready to go as well. I've got the Sol Bio um, liquid in there. We're still trialling the Sol Bio and seems to be going okay. Um, don't think there's any miracles happening there. It's just um, a more natural chemical. It does the same job as far as I can see so far. But the jury's out. We'll, we'll test it some more in this hot weather. So got the bike rack I don't know whether you've seen our previous video we've got the bike rack to go on um, I'll do that again and then show you the end result rather than um, show you put you through all that again um, we've got the two my riders um, e-bikes that we've recently purchased and we're still getting used to <laughs> a bit of fun are you ready then yeah we're ready after all this planning and deliberation and and uh, pack in the van at least, well, twice. <laughs> yeah, I keep saying, have you got this? Have you got that? Yeah. Have you packed this? Have you packed that? That's it. We're always terrified you're going to leave something behind. Yes. Something important. Like your yeah, best shoes or something. Or your, or your passports. Yeah. Um, we've been through all that, haven't we, a couple of times. Uh, the bikes yeah. are on the back. Um, we've been through the van with the, everything we've taken. bike locks, haven't you? Bikes are already locked on the back. The key. Locks. Yeah, I got yeah. the key for the locks. Yeah. So yeah, all the little things like that you see. Yeah. Check the passports are in the in the in the, yeah. the wallets. Passports are here. So we're um we're ready to go. It's eleven in the morning. Um, what's the date today? Twenty fifth of August, twenty twenty two. And this is the start of our Euro tour. And um, we've been building up to this for some time. Today, uh, I had a haircut. Um, oh no, I've, I've forgotten something. Oh, you've forgotten something? Yeah. All right. I've got to quickly get something that to go in the freezer. All right. Can I have a key? Yes, you can. Sorry, I, I forgot the fish. You forgot it's your in the fish. Freezer. I had a couple of coolie pots. Oh, jolly good. So while Sue gets, uh, gets the things that she's left in the freezer, we'll just uh, tell you what the plan today is. Um, Yorkshire Motor Roamers, as you know, Kev and Tracy are with us on this tour for the entire six weeks. Um, they left Yorkshire yesterday and stayed in Chapel, which is near Colchester, not far from us, only about 25 miles from us. But we're, So we'll both be travelling, not together, but we'll be travelling in a similar direction, down the A12, around the M25, and then down to Folkestone. Um, Thunderstorms, uh, heavy thumb thunderstorms in Kent today with uh, localised flooding. So there's a couple of challenges there. We don't quite know what the uh, conditions are going to be like, but just as we've got in the van, the rain has started uh, here as well. So there's a band of thunderstorms, I think, coming across from the west. So, um, and Sue's back. <laughs> I've got my fish. Forgot your fish. It's in case we need to eat tonight. 
Yeah, so that's going in the freezer. Um, Yesterday we collected the doggy passports. Um, I know they're not called that anymore. It's a health dog or pet health certificate. 11 pages, uh, £297 for two dogs. And plus on top of that was £118 for the um, rabies jabs. So, to, um, and with the costs coming back into the country, we've budgeted £500 for taking the dogs on holiday with us. I know it had to be done and we wouldn't um, put them in a the kennel, so they're too old for all that. So um, we've, we're taking them with us, it's as simple as that. Sue's still messing about with the freezer. <laughs> Uh, we're going to get on the road, we're down the A12, we're going to meet some thunderstorms no doubt and then when we get to Folkestone hopefully our friends Kev and Tracy will be there as well. We'll see you in Folkestone. made it to the Black Horse Farm at Folkestone as you probably saw as we came in here. The site has filled up a bit over the afternoon. We've um, had a little walk around the site with the dogs, a nice doggy walk over the back here. We're on the part of the campsite that's um, set aside for people that are leaving early in the morning for, for a ferry or the Eurotunnel and uh, it's very comfortable. Um, right adjacent to a facilities block so we're not going to disturb anyone here when we wake up early in the morning and start moving around. Well here we are then inside Smurf and as promised we're going to run through an essential list of all the bits and bobs that you need to take with you or think about when you're taking a van into Europe. Now we're going into France via Euro Tunnel, aren't we Kev? We are, yeah. Tomorrow and uh, so we've made a little list here and I'll refer to the notes and I'll ask Kev to chip in every time I forget something. Which okay. is going to be every, doing the every best. Time. Yeah. yeah. Alright. Um, so the first thing I wrote down that's essential to have, or I think it is essential to have, is a folder. Yeah. So we've both got a folder. Kev's got his here. Yeah, that's uh, my uh, folder. And there's lots of little compartments in there because there's all sorts of documents that we're going to take. And the first one we said was a registration, vehicle yeah. registration document. Um, I've got my original. You've got a copy, haven't you? I've got my original and copy. Okay. Um, okay. So I'm going to try and get away with just yep. having to show the... Uh, and then vehicle the insurance and MOT certificate if... Yeah, uh, if, if, if you, you have one, one you, need yeah. th you need them. So a copy of that. And then um, we've got uh, breakdown and health insurance. Okay, which we've done ours through Caravan and Motor on Yeah, top. we have, yeah. So some people get um, AA or RAC separately, which is great. And yeah. then you do need to go online or to your insurance company and ask for health insurance while you're away. I've used the the red pennant service before when we went uh, 10 years ago to France um, the red pennants through the caravan and motor home club and they do cover your vehicle breakdown um, your health insurance for anybody that's traveling mm -hmm. and also repatriation so if one of you is ill mm -hmm. or if you're um, uh, you're not able to drive they'll get your van home mm -hmm. if you have a spell in hospital they'll mm -hmm. take care of your wife or your husband or whatever, mm. and your dogs. So um, you know they'll they'll take care of the whole situation. And the thing we we actually used our um, red pennant last time because we had a vehicle breakdown scenario. Uh, it wasn't a serious one, but the caravan and motorhome club acted as our interpreter. Mm. So they helped us with um, a garage, yeah. a local uh, Land Rover um, garage at the time. So. Yeah. Really valuable stuff. Yeah, so it's all, it's all in there, yep. and I think you get is it a ninety day period or is it a bit longer? There than are that? various the different various. Ones. Yeah, you can have a year, you can have twelve months, That's or right, you can yeah. have shorter yeah. periods. I yeah. think my I went for 45, 45 days. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think That's what I did. Yeah, so you you're covered for that period of time. Yeah. 
but they'll help you with that when you contact them. Uh, so that's insurances, which is pretty important when you're mm. a couple of old boys absolutely. like us. Yeah, have. absolutely, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> then well, uh, we might forget. <laughs> uh, yeah, we've already forgotten. Yeah. Um, the next thing I had on my list was um, to do with road tolls. Now, the is it called a vignetta? Yeah, there's various um, things. Yeah, um, traveling through France, um, you don't have to have one of these. It's um, it's a little little gizmo, as I call it. You stick it on your windscreen just behind you. Um, your mirror, your rear view mirror um, and in France when you're uh, approaching on the motorways when you're approaching the payages um, this pings and lifts the barrier for you um, and what you will have done is you would have filled all the information in i.e. your bank details more importantly because that when that pings it goes to, straight to your bank to say that um, you've just spent so many euros on a French motorway and then you it's sort of like tw uh, a month's credit, you're a month in front so sure. you'll get invoiced uh, the month after. Yeah. So that's in France, um, there, you don't have to have this, you can just go up to the gate and pay by card, uh, it's mainly card now. Uh, but I've had one of these for quite a few years and yeah. uh, find it useful. Yeah, the last time uh, we did this we found that Sue was hanging out of the window with a, with coins at the time actually yeah, because yeah, most yeah. of the things 10 years ago weren't card Absolutely, and, and card yeah, readers. Were, yeah. So mm. um, it, your your tag, I'll call mm. it a tag, yeah. um, it does away with all that. You it can does, just yeah, drive yeah, through. Just drive through. Whereas we're going to be hanging out the window, I'm afraid. Okay? Yeah, yeah, so you'll have yeah, to just yeah, wait for yeah. us, mate. If you think yeah, something goes yeah, there's wrong. a little waiting area at the other side. Is there? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we coffee. can just park up there. We'll get a brew going for you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So um, other vignettes for road tolls. We've yep. got um, so emissions. We have yeah. emissions. Right. Okay. So in France. Um, you have to have now. I haven't taken my sticker off yet, but if you can just see it there, the pale yellow just there, uh, that's the sticker that will go on the windscreen. Um, mainly if you're driving um, through certain cities, we yeah. have a system similar here in the UK. Um, they have one in France and other European countries. It's always safe to have one because if you do find yourself um, you're looking for an air um, and you want to stop off at a certain town that town might have an emissions um, policy um, and you would need to be displaying one of them yeah. um, and you've got the same for Germany yeah you? so that's the yeah. the French one mm -hmm. we've both got the German one exactly uh, it's just called an emission sticker you can see that a bit clearer um, that's the German one we don't. We've checked already. We don't need one for Switzerland, mm -hmm. um, and we don't want, need one for Italy either. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. those are all the stickers, and, and then different. you've got the Swiss tolls. Yeah, the Swiss sticker, toll, didn't you? Yeah. The road tolls. See, I've got one of those as well. Yeah. So we've both got this. <laughs> this so is called a Swiss vignetta, uh -huh. Trev, um, right. and uh, yeah. we. What these enables you to do is when you're approaching the border. Uh, of Switzerland from whichever country uh, you'll see there's lots and lots of cameras pointing down at you they're taking details of every vehicle that's entering or approaching the country if you've got one of these displayed in your windscreen um, the camera picks that up and tells you that you've paid um, I think, can you remember how much it was Trev? I didn't pay as much as you, you know, uh, it was about um, £33 uh, there is a booking charge of £20 and then you've got your, your, your postage on top of there. Um, so they're, they're not cheap but what it does, you don't have to get one. Um, if you don't have one, when you get to the border you'll be pulled to one side and you'll have to purchase one. Yeah. Yeah, you've got to display one when you're going through Switzerland. Um, we've also got our headlight stickers, haven't we, Kev? We have, yeah. Uh, this is to deflect the uh, headlights if you're driving in the dark in Europe because we drive on the other side of the road. Yeah, we do. So yeah. um, uh, we'll be applying those. Uh, on, probably on the train in the morning. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Well, yeah, we'll it'll while be dark waiting. in the morning yeah. when we travel down to... Uh, yeah. We don't want to be blinding the zone drivers, do we? That's it. That's the way. Yeah. Now, talking of... Um, 
stickers. I've uh, I'll put a couple of clips on screen now. I've uh, got number plates with the old GB on them. So I've got some vinyls and I've laid those vinyls over the top with the UK. Um, and just um, in case I've also put a UK sticker on the back of Smurf. Um, in the olden days we used to have those, didn't we? The All GB the time, stickers. Yeah. There are some other stickers that Kev and I won't need because uh, for larger vans. Aren't That's they? right, yeah. I think it's three and a half tons. Uh, and yeah, above. and above. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so we're under three and a half times. We are. Yeah. Um, but once um, you get the larger vehicles, you need to have the yeah. the angles morts. You'd have seen them on lorries right. um, up and down the country. Those lorries that go uh, to uh, across the channel. Um, as far as I know, they're only required in France, mm -hmm. um, and you stick them on your our offside and on the rear of yeah. your vehicle but we don't need them but if you're three and a half ton if your van is three and a half tons and above um, you will need uh, to have one of these on that's it then there's lots of other little bits that we are used to taking as like the first aid kit yeah and Kev's got a box beside us got, here with all yeah. these things in yeah, um, so. and you need a high-vis jacket for the driver and each passenger it's, that's important uh, because yeah. at one time it used to be just for the driver, mm -hmm. um, but now it's um, it is for each passenger that's yeah. in your yeah. vehicle. Okay. Um, spare light bulb kit. Yeah, I have I have a couple, but um, yeah, the <laughs> universal ones. I've got uh, four of those. You got and four, and I don't know which one to bring. <laughs> so guess what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I brought them you all. Brought them all <laughs> just to make, just to be on the safe side. It's yeah. always, it's always a good, good practice. Yeah, I yeah. bought a new one as yeah. well in okay, case so, yeah. uh, anything was out of date. Yeah. Um, and then a breathalyzer kit. Now yeah. these are, are not French law now, apparently. No, they've uh, they've changed that. Um, but uh, you, <laughs> you're going to meet a police officer that wants one if you meet a police officer. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's one of those things. Never take a chance. I always bring spare pair of spectacles. Um, I'm always frightened I'm going to drop or sit mm. on my spectacles. Mm. So, and I think at one time it was necessary um, on the continent or in Europe to uh, to. A carrier spare pair of glasses for the driver so I've just got in the habit of bringing an extra pair. Yeah. Um, I've written down here emergency phone numbers now um, I in my folder and I know Kev you've got lots of bits and pieces in your folder mm -hmm. uh, right. phone numbers for various things. Um, I've got a number of emergency phone numbers and that includes the insurances that I talked about earlier yeah. so that uh, if we do need them in a hurry we know where they are. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then uh, contact details for the sites and services that yeah. we're likely to use while I we're think, away. Yeah, in, in my folder, we, we both in our folders, we have yeah. uh, all the details of every site we're going to and, and details on there. So, sure. so we yeah. printed off. If we've made yeah. a booking, we've printed that off, yeah, haven't we? So yeah. that we know. Uh, Mobile phone contracts. Now, it's important to know if you carry a, a smartphone like we do, it's important to know what you can and can't do with it. Um, most of the roaming in Europe still exists from previously yeah, prior, prior yeah, to Brexit. Does, yeah. You could yeah. go anywhere with yeah, your phone. Yeah. Most of that is still um, available to you, although I think they do restrict the amount of data you can use, mm. depending on which service you use. And also, if you want to try and ring 0300 or 0800 numbers and free phone numbers and things like that, they may not be available to you while yeah, you're in France right, yeah. or uh, out of uh, the UK. So be aware that you know some of the charges may be a little, a little different or you may, your contract may be reduced a little by being out of the UK. Mm. Sat nav, we've got um, one on in the vehicle and and uh, our caravan and motorhome club sat nav mm. and both have Europe maps. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I did refresh them recently. So yeah, that, that, um, that is important, Trev, to make sure that your sat-nav is, uh, um, is usually Western Europe, that it's up to date. Sure. Um, if you haven't travelled into Europe for a while, just check so, that it's up to date and yeah. uh, have it updated. And then uh, the last few things that I tend to bring along, and I, I even carry them in the UK, is a tow rope. Mm. And it's, uh, it's not a tow rope that you would normally have in the boot of a car because don't forget you're three and a half ton yeah so it's yeah. a substantial tow rope mm. Mm. uh jump leads same applies mm. yeah. you know um, uh, um, ethel my little car would need tiny little jump leads mm. compared to mm. this so yeah. Yeah. good sturdy jump leads cleaning cloths and uh for the windows and headlights and number plates yeah. and things yeah. like that and i've got some screen wash a small bottle of screen wash 
um, and uh, uh, I haven't brought any engine oil this time, but I usually mm. do have a little mm. bottle of engine yeah, oil. Yeah, no, I haven't brought any. Uh, no. It's, it, a lot of it's down to uh, space availability with and how confident you yeah. are with your van. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you've got yeah. an older van, those are the kind of things you might you wanna, just might need to have them yeah. about. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, that's about it for all the bits and bobs. Thanks, Kevin, for your yep. support with that one. Yeah. No problem. Um, well equipped and yep. uh, ready to go. Ready to go on this <laughs> adventure. Well, we're in the Black Horse pub here in Folkestone and I've gone for the uh, burger and so has Kev have, yeah. and Trace what you got there? I've got chili loaded fries. Chili loaded fries? Yes indeed. Well. And they're very nice. And by the way you need a top up. I've ordered one. Oh good. Don't worry. What have you got there Sue? Avocado sandwich. Oh very Cheers. nice. Well, good morning. It's um, half past four. I didn't know there was a half past four. But we're outside the Black Horse Farm campsite. And uh, we've showered, we're ready to go, and I'm walking the dogs. And it's very quiet, so I'm whispering. <laughs> Sue's not been feeling particularly well in the night, so we're a bit worried about whether to carry on or not. The car just went past. We think she might have a little water infection, but um, we're, we're just going to um, go with the flow, I think. We're playing it hour by hour at the moment, and it's a beautiful morning. Very still, and about 19, 20 degrees, and I'm just waiting for the doggies to do their thing, you know. And then we'll get down to the terminal. We're gonna get there for five o'clock. Our train is scheduled for 7.35. Well, we've made it to the terminal and um, we went in the car park rather than the motorhome park to start in. with. I think Kev's, Kev's still over there, but he's quite a short van, so he's getting away with it. Mm. Couldn't get in any of the bays, so I've come out again and, and I saw a sign saying um, motorhomes. There's quite a few uh, white boxes just alongside me here. Um, we're going to pet pet passport now um, it's just over in the terminal there so um, we'll wander over and I'll let you know how we got on in just a minute well we've come through immigration we were uh, at the UK passport control and then we went through to the French passport control um, and just before that we were asked to go into a bay for a gas check and they just checked that we were our gas was turned off which it is and the uh, French passport control uh, stamped our passports and we're now in a queue waiting to board and there's a electronic board just up here I'll show you in a second which um, says that D3 um, boarding is in 16 minutes at o and it departs 07 37 so it's two minutes adrift so at the moment we're setting up the sat nav we're heading to um, Saint Omar which is um, about an hour in France and there's a little there and we're targeting the little to do some shopping and Saint Omar is apparently a, a pretty town so we'll probably have a bit of lunch there um, I'm doing little jobs in the cabby while I'm sitting here. I'm going to switch over the VW to kilometres. So on the screen um, it will be showing kilometres rather than miles. And um, I'm also going to check that the VW maps are working and get that um, up and running as well. We've got um, Lidl's on our Garmin 
um, the Caravan and Motorhome Club sat nav and I've also checked it on Google Maps so if we get lost we've got lots of um, help um, and that's it really for the minute um, the next uh, well, the next 20 minutes we should be boarding the train Now we're getting closer. We've been stopped. We're just approaching the trains now. Sue spotted a horse up on the hill. Look at that. Here, Sue. Oh. A stone horse up on the hill. Registered. <laughs> Lots of cloaks and bangs. Yeah. Clinkity clankity. What an incredible thing. As Kev just said, how exciting! Mm. Yeah. Got to make sure you've got enough space. Yeah, I think we're alright at the moment. When we go through these doorways, where the joins are, there's you doors. Have to, you have to check. Shut. Make sure. You don't know when he's going to stop, do you? No. He's stopping now. Yeah, just hang back here. Mm. Because those doors, carriage doors, shut as a safety measure. I wouldn't go through yet. I think there's enough length there, is there? No, you have to be inside those lines, don't you? I reckon we're fit now, don't you? Yeah, you can fit in there now, can't you? Are you going to find what's going there? You can fit in there. Well, thank you to Sue for that last little bit of footage. We, we, we weren't far on the train, actually. Um, don't feel like we've driven very far on the train. Uh, just a few carriages. Um, but we're on, and we're now uh, waiting for departure. Um, just turn me uh, other camera off just there. Um, that's about it, really. We're going to have a, a cold drink. Um, um, probably a banana or something, something to eat and then uh, just enjoy the 35 minute crossing. Well I just detected some movement. <laughs> There's a little window there, that's the only way we can tell that we're moving. Uh, now the <laughs> I thought hang on, the band's rocking about a bit. But, uh, you know, just giving out announcements uh, in English and then in French. But, uh, we're on the move, which is fantastic. Uh,